Hey guys and girls, it's Ken here from OK Portugal and today we have a midweek virtual property tour video for you. Now on the weekends or on Sunday at 11 o'clock GMT we have our regular Portugal Farm Life vlog where you can catch up with the antics of us and our animals on our farm. But midweek, wherever possible, we like to drop these virtual property tour videos because we know that a lot of you at home are really interested in buying properties here and I know that these will be very useful to you. So one of our viewers called Carl, thank you Carl, um, he's commissioned us to shoot this video and I'm so glad that he did because it's a really, really stunning property. Now he's allowed us to share this with the channel, which I'm really grateful for as well. And um, I just wanted to point out that we aren't the sellers, we aren't the agents, we don't make any commission off the sale of these properties. So when we do these virtual property tour videos, we offer our unbiased opinions on what we feel and see when we're at these properties. Now, if you do have any questions about the property, please look in the description box just below this video. I'm gonna put all of the agent's details and yeah, send them a message because obviously we are not the sellers. But I hope that everyone enjoys the video and uh, if you want one of these made for yourselves, drop us an email. Hi Carl, it's Ken here from OK Portugal and we are standing right outside the property that you've commissioned us to film for you. Now you wanted to know whether or not you could live on this farm whilst running a and b type business, uh, but you also were interested in becoming more self-sufficient and also growing things like your own vegetables and crops and maybe doing a small agricultural business. And one of the things you really wanted to look at was how much renovation the property is going to need in order for you to live there. So we are gonna take a look at all of those things. But first, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background info on Sabigol itself. So the municipality of Sabigol borders Spain and lies in central Portugal. And from where we are right here, Google Maps gives it two hours and 40 minutes to get to Porto Airport, three hours to get to Lisbon Airport, and five hours to get to Faro Airport, which is right down in the south. We are five kilometers away from Sabigal City. It's a city with about 3,000 people. Um, it's got like supermarkets like Intermarche, it's got restaurants, Sabigal Castle. It also has a river beach. So, um, you know, that's a real bonus if you do want to run something like a B&B. &B. There are places close by where people can go and, you know, enjoy the scenes and stuff like that. Now, we are on a dirt track. And this dirt track's in very good condition, but if you head back in this direction for 1,000 meters, you basically run into Sabigal Dam. And Sabigal Dam is, um, it's basically a hydroelectric dam where they get electricity from, but they also use it for drinking water. So that's another real good bonus if you do have people staying here, uh, you know, get some bicycles or something like that, and they can cycle around the area, go and swim in the dam, go and swim in the river beach. And uh, yeah, all in all, it makes it a really interesting spot. Now the property itself, uh, is going for 230,000 euros. It's a three and a half hectare farm. It's fenced, so fully fenced all around. Uh, the house has four bedrooms, three bathrooms, uh, and is 300 square meters, so it's a really big building. There's a swimming pool, a barbecue area, a bread oven, a kennel, and a storage area. There's uh, like chicken runs, there's vegetable gardens, fruit orchards, chestnut, oak, pine, uh, wells with water all year round, and so much more, so yeah. Why don't you come with me and we go and check it out. I've just been on a walk around with the estate agent and I didn't actually realize just how big this land was. It is three and a half hectares, but uh, it just seems so much bigger. Now, the property starts all the way back there, or at least the um, habitable part of the property, the part that we were standing outside earlier. And directly behind me here is another part of the property that's got an agricultural building and something that you can put a tractor and stuff like that. So. Let's start with this and then we'll walk our way down to the property. I think this is the best way to start this tour. So it's all fully fenced off and this fence line runs all the way in this area. There's another big field behind it and everything and then that runs all the way back down to where the house is in that, well, in that direction. And to the left over here, we have a whole pine forest. It's full of, by the looks of it, it's mainly pine, but there's also chestnuts. Uh, there's a couple of oaks and things over there. Um, where that third electricity pole is, and then back in this direction is this whole strip of pine forest that belongs to the property. So you get storage for agricultural stuff like your tractors and tools and everything. Uh, you've got this whole lot here where you can park cars and do whatever you want. And over here, there's a big water tank. So judging by the size of that, I would say it's probably somewhere between five and 10,000 liters and it's elevated. So you basically pump water into there and when you want to irrigate, you've got loads of pressure. Uh, everything is fully fenced off. You've got this tarmac road, which is a, it's a public road, uh, but on either side, you've got, you know, you've got your forest here, got a little bit more forest on this side. 
So pretty amazing. Now I'm just going to walk down to the end here so we can look back and just see what the space looks like. So this over here is where the actual habitable part of the property starts, where the garden and everything is. And you can see Gina's just parked outside over there. She's talking to the estate agent. Uh, but I just want to turn you around and at the very end there, that's where we've just walked up from. And then we've got this beautiful forest. You know, you're going to have plenty of firewood. This is your access to the forest. And you can see it's very well laid out. You can definitely get a tractor or a car down between all of these rows and it looks very neat. I don't see any evidence of the processionary caterpillar nests, which is a horrible caterpillar that basically is um, poisonous to dogs and other pets. But I don't see any evidence of that, so it looks like it's in really good condition. Uh, also interesting to know, so the house is over there, this field over there is yours, obviously this forest is yours, but this is also yours, so this little strip and then it runs all the way down. Uh, one thing that wouldn't be yours is this, um, this over here, which is a community oven. Uh, I'm not sure if it's in use, but basically people would go there in the past and they would bake bread and all sorts of stuff. So that's not part of it, but yeah, this forest goes all the way to about where my finger is over there. And then on this side of the road is the orchard. So yeah, a really interesting property. Now this is one of the entrances to get to the orchard. As you can see, it's not really in much use. Uh, this is the estate agent, Joao. And I'm just going to zoom in on that so you can see his details. So now we get to see a little bit more. Um, so to start with, this is a tar road. And a tar road over there and a tar road. But this over here is a dirt road, but it's in very good condition. Uh, it's very flat. And um, yeah, I don't see any trouble with um, like any access or anything like that. Now on the right here again, this is all part of the property. As you can see, there's like chestnut trees, a bit of field in the background. And on this side here, this is now the fence line that's of the main property. So I think what we're gonna do before we look at the, um, you know, any more of the uh, sort of outside properties and stuff is we're gonna go inside and we're gonna have a look and see exactly what's in there. And this is uh, Joao, <laughs> and he's the agent. Okay, so outside you can see we've got some nice big cast iron gates. Uh, they have a little bit of rust on them, but it's nothing too serious. You could just paint over that. Uh, and it goes onto a beautiful Calzada paved uh, driveway, which takes you into this huge barn area over here. Um, but also it gives you access if you're using a tractor or a pickup truck to get into what's your vegetable garden. There's some olive trees dotted about and some fruit trees on this side. And one of the most striking features as you first arrive is this, the swimming pool. And it's actually very clean. It does need a, um, like a new paint, I think. It looks like the swimming pool just needs to be painted, um, but it's got two surface skimmers on it and it looks like they're quite effective. And still, we're all paved over here. We've got a whole paved area around the pool. And then we've got a lovely little barbecue area. So let's go and have a closer look at that quickly. So they've put like an umbrella here and there's a really nice double sized area here where you can basically bry stuff or have a barbecue. There's even a sink. And then there's a, a bread oven. And this bread oven has a chimney. So you're not gonna get all of the smoke blowing in your face which is really, really nice. You can basically bake breads and stews and like anything, roasts, you know, anything that you can do in an oven at home. And all the smoke comes out the top and out the top there. So that's pretty cool. Um, in the courtyard, they've got a, a lovely tree, uh, tree here. I'm not sure, it looks like a strawberry tree. Some outside taps. And now we enter the main house. We have to go up one level. Now it's in a very good state of re like repair. Um, it looks like it was painted sort of about a year ago. Uh, the paint's in very good condition. There's a nice area up here with like a, a banister where you can put tables and chairs. And this is where we enter the one side of the house. So we go straight into a kitchen and it's a really large room. Uh, the first thing I want to point out is that 
all the doors are insulated and double glazed and all of the windows are double glazed so that's going to be good for winter and there's um, shutters these roller shutters on every single window there is also a central heating system and that runs off gas and off wood so there's a gas central heating part of the house and there's also a sorry not gas i mean diesel and then there's a wood part uh, the kitchen itself it's got quite solid looking wood units uh, double sink nice little cooker in there let's see we've got the oven over here i mean it's in really good condition um, it's quite quite an old looking wood burner but i'm sure it's very effective an old chimney down there lots of storage and yeah all in all in really good condition and really nice i'm going to stand in this corner over here so that we can get an idea of the size of the room um, i mean what do i think this is probably about five or six meters down in that direction and again about five or six meters down in this direction so up on this level we have a staircase going down and we have a bathroom so I'm going to do these areas first. Uh, the bathroom's just got a, a little sink, a little sink vanity area with some storage. There's a toilet, no bidet. Um, and then there's a, oh wait, there is a bidet. So there's a bidet and a toilet. And then we have uh, a stand-up shower bathtub. So all very nice. It's all very clean. All of the tiles are clean. There's no dirt in the grouting. It's all painted quite well. I mean, this house is ready to move in. Uh, we've got double glazing again on all of the windows. Hello. <laughs> all in all, a very nice house. Now, before we go to the rest of the upstairs part, I'm going to take you downstairs. So this is the entrance of where we came in. And let's just go down these stairs quickly and have a look. So this area over here is, again, a really big room. I would say it's probably six by six. Um, and this over here is a big bar. It's got some sinks, it's got some storage. So this is almost like a big bar, banquet type place. You've got storage for glasses and drinks and all sorts of stuff. You can have tables out here and serve people. Um, this is just loads of room here. Look, there's even more storage on this side. Almost like another bar surface. Uh, radiators throughout as well. And we have another little bathroom down here. So we have a shower, a toilet, and a sink. All nice and neat. And then as we take our way back in this direction, we have another little room that was being used as a laundry. I'm just going to wait for the lights to turn on. There, there we go. So we've got some ventilation here. I believe they were using this as a laundry area. Um, I think it was quite a damp room because I am seeing signs of mildew and stuff on the roof. Um, but you know, that's what happens when, you know, there's condensation in rooms and things. So, you know, perhaps if this wasn't a laundry and you just painted it, you wouldn't be having this problem. And then one last thing I just want to show you as we head on out here is um, this doorway takes you outside and the swimming pool and the barbecue area is just over there. So this is almost like the sort of downstairs kitchen area where you can prepare all the food and get all the drinks and everything to go down to the pool. And yeah. Right, let's close this up. Head on back up the stairs and have a look at the rest of the house. So we've seen everything on this upstairs kitchen area, but now we're going to make our way into where the two bedrooms are. So let's start with the one on the left. As you can see, it's a nice size. We've got a double bed in here with plenty of room on either side. So you could have a, well, you could easily get a super king bed in here. And it's got some nice big windows. Look at that. And this looks out over the mountains and over one of your fields, which is very nice. They've managed to put quite a big wardrobe in here, tables in here, a little sofa. I mean, this is a big room. So as far as bedrooms are concerned, this is a really nice space. And on the other side, we have exactly the same again, the same size room. In here, they have two single beds. 
very, very nice. Uh, just to point out, both bedrooms also have central heating inside. And these windows look out over the little courtyard with what I think is a strawberry bush, some hydrangeas, the barbecue hut, and also a swimming pool. So this is where it gets interesting because this doorway over here, if you shut this off and lock it, this over here becomes a completely separate house. So let's go and have a look at that. So this is almost like a landing hallway area. On this side we have some doors that open into this big barn area that we saw from the front of the house. And this really is a huge barn. I don't even know how big it is. I don't actually have a tape measure long enough to measure this, but you can see it's really expansive. I mean, you could fit all sorts of cars and tractors and trailers and all sorts of things in here. Very big space. It does have lights everywhere. Let me see if I can turn on these lights for a second. And um, if they'll illuminate upstairs. No, it doesn't seem to be working. But upstairs, Above the house here, we've got some railings and a whole big storage area. I'll just go up there quickly so you can have a look. Obviously, it's very dark. I can't get any extra lighting up here, so hopefully we can see what's going on. But it's quite a big area. It extends quite far back. Um, you could store tons of stuff up here. I must say, though, I can feel the heat. I'm looking up at the roof, and I can definitely feel the heat coming off it. Uh, the rest of the building itself, when you're not in this barn, is actually quite cool. Uh, but in here is very, very warm. So, yeah. So I'm guessing you could access this part of the house either through these big doors and then coming through here. Uh, and I think there's also another entrance in the kitchen. Okay, so this is where we came from. This is the other house that you could close this door and you could have them as two separate houses because you know, you, you wanted to do something where you could rent out a section of the house. Um, so in this first room over here, we have a washing machine. We also have a toilet and a little vanity. Sorry, just a little mirror. We've got a little bit of storage. And then we work our way into this room over here, which is a shower and a toilet. And that does have like a little vanity area. Also has central heating. Now, the condition of the shower it definitely does need a bit of TLC. I, I would think you'd need a new shower unit. Um, and also the, the toilet probably needs a little bit of updating. After a while, all these things start to go slightly yellow color. Um, okay, so now, as we work our way through the rest of this, we've got like another little sort of area where you've got some seating. And let's start with, with these rooms. So this is the first room, which is a very small bedroom. Let's see if I can find a light switch. A very small bedroom or could be used as a office or something like that. So you could put your desk here and your computers. Uh, this has a window that opens up into this big barn area. And again, that barn area is quite warm right now. And potentially in the winter is gonna be very cold with that tall ceiling. The next room, just next to it is a bedroom. And it's a nice, a nice size double bedroom. Uh, they've got a double bed in here and two side tables. Um, you could potentially get a king size bed in here and smaller side tables. Um, but they've also managed to get uh, a nice wardrobe in here and also a vanity. Let me go and stand in this other corner. Give you guys a better look. So there we go. Now it's worth pointing out that there is a little bit of damage on the coving here. So the concrete part of the coving seems to have uh, broken away. In fact, I don't think that's concrete. I think it could be uh, polystyrene. But that seems to have kind of, well, come away there and come away there. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the size of this building and the land and the price, uh, it's, you know, I don't see that as too much of a problem. But yeah, it's, it's a fairly good sized room, uh, but you're never going to get sunlight in here. And your window is open to this, which in winter is going to be cold and summer is going to be you know, hot. So that could be a little bit of a problem. But I like to point out all the good things and the bad things, so, uh, so that's worth mentioning. And as you work your way through, now we've got this next room 
And this is a laundry. Let's see, is this the light? Yeah. So we've got another laundry in here. I think this is just a tumble dryer. So they had the washing machine in the other room. Here's the tumble dryer. Perhaps you could put a washing machine in here. I'm not sure. Um, and they've got a little bit of storage going on over here. It's like your area where you can put like vacuum cleaners and stuff like that. And then finally, we have this kitchen. So a really light, bright, airy kitchen. It's got, a, it's got an insulated front door here and a really nice space. So we've got a double sink, we've got lots of storage. Um, goes all the way across here to a really big fireplace. And you can see they've got these big cast iron pots where you can cook stews and all sorts of things, uh, which is something I really enjoy doing up in the mountains. And there's lots of space in here. I mean, look, you can put sofas, all sorts of stuff. A lot of storage, which is just happening on this side, and lots and lots of light coming in. So that parts, those parts are all really good. Now, the parts that are not so good is, there's a little bit of damage. There's a little bit of a hole in the reef here. I'm not sure what that's about, but you can see that there's a lot of polystyrene in there. So there is insulation on that roof. Um, and as we work our way in this direction, we've got what looks to be a little bit of water coming through and causing damage. And, um, but that's worth pointing out because, but it's, you know, it could potentially be a big problem or a small problem. I, I don't know, you would have to look at, um, at the roof and see it's probably just a little bit of a leak, but uh, yeah, it's worth pointing out. Okay, so all of these windows, double glazed again. We have a nice double glazed uh, door on this side, and this takes you out of this kitchen area into a nice paved spot where you could basically put chairs and tables and have a nice little relaxing part of the house. Uh, we've got a Nespera tree here. We've got a lot of vines growing up on the sides. And then we have this little room over here. Now this is part of the central heating system that I spoke about earlier. And hopefully the camera can see what's going on in here. So we've got a big tank there. That's the diesel tank. And that's basically what fires some of the wood burning uh, heating that's going on here. Sorry, that, that's firing the, the diesel heating. And then there's actually a diesel, sorry, there's a wood heater which is inside the big garage area. Um, so yeah, so that's the diesel heater. And there it is. So there's a little bit of cramped floor space around here, but you know, a useful area. You could definitely store stuff under here. And it's relatively clean, even though it does have a sandy floor. Right, let me just close that there for a sec. And then we have what looks like another door, but it's actually just a locker for your gas bottles. And this gas is what you're gonna run your sort of hobs and stuff like that off. It's all nice and neat. And, uh, ah, yes, excellent. Muito obrigado. Can I have some water? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Joao very kindly just gave me some water because uh, it's a really hot day today. It's like 37 degrees. Um, but because we are higher up here, so we're um, 750 meters above sea level, it's actually a bit cooler. It's about 33 here. Uh, but anyway, let's carry on with the tour. So we've just come out of this area here in the background, which is the kitchen. And then behind me over here, this is the door, that door that was from that downstairs uh, bar area that goes down to the, to the swimming pool. So I think what we're gonna do is uh, we are gonna go around the outskirts of the property and work our way back to the front again. So let's go down this way. There's a beautiful oak tree just above us here, giving us lots of shade. Uh, there's a little gate that takes us into, which is the orchard, where, where there's a whole bunch of different trees. So I think what we're gonna do is, uh, let's go in this direction. So it's all fenced off. So you're gonna stop things like wild pigs and stuff going in there and eating all of your fruit. And in front of us here, we have what looks like some kind of animal enclosure. So let's go and have a closer look. Yeah. So I think this is some kind of a kennel. I'm not sure. I mean, I wouldn't keep a dog in here, but potentially you could use it for chickens or something like that. And it's all fenced off, so you won't get foxes and things getting in there. Um, and then on this side we have, I'm not sure, it's like a little wooden structure, looks like it's for, um, 
for some type of birds or something like that. And then over here, I think this is a chicken run. This looks a lot bigger. Yes, I think this is where you would have chickens. Yes. So they've got where the chickens sleep and lay eggs and everything on this side. And then this whole area here is the actual chicken run. And it sounds like there's a beehive in here. Because I can hear a lot of bees. So I'm going to get out of here before I get stung. <laughs> uh, over here is a beautiful big cherry tree. There's some big cherry trees just over here. And this looks out all over this uh, orchard. So let's go to the corner. And we can look back at the property and then we can walk the limit. We can walk the surrounding limits of it. Oh wait, there's actually one more building here. And I'm not sure what this is for, but it's also another little animal enclosure. And now we can see the tarred road of where we were standing earlier, where there's that little piece of forest. So up to this little post here is your part of the property and then going back up. So now we walk through the orchard. We've got lots of cherries, as you can see. These are the big ones that we're walking under at the moment. And then we've got some other ones. So this is apple. We've got a couple of apples on there. You can see. And we've got some red apples on this side. Um, got some nuts. I can't remember what type of nut this is, but I think this is a nut tree of some sort. Let's have a look. Hmm. I can't remember what this is called. I, I used to have one of these and I can't remember the name right now. Uh, and then these over here are pears. So we've got some pear trees. So we've got pears and apples that I can see so far. And yeah, we've got lots of them. Now the condition of the trees, not so good. I think they need to be treated because some of them, as you can see, have got some kind of like spots and diseases and stuff. But to be honest, that's not too difficult to get rid of. You usually treat those in like early spring. I mean, you can see this one's doing a lot better. Look at the condition of the leaves and look at the fruit. Uh, we also have some different trees. So now this one over here is peach. I think this is peach or apricot. Let's go and have a closer look. Yeah, you know, these look like apricots. And they're also in quite nice condition. I think the birds have gotten to a few of them, but generally speaking, look at that. That's beautiful. So a lovely little orchard if we look back at this now. Animal buildings over there. The main house and barn in that direction. The front driveway in this direction. So let's head on down there now. Wow, look at the size of this um, pear tree. Are these pears or are they apples? I think they're apples, but they're like a pear color. But this is a huge tree, look at that. Amazing. Full of fruit. Nice old wagon. So here we have like a sort of pagoda type area with grapes and everything growing over it, some ivy, and a little tap, a nice little seating area in the shade. And then this area over here, I can imagine is for growing vegetables and stuff. It's all kind of fenced off. You can put all your veggies in there, you can access it from the front door there. And uh, yeah, like a really nice little area. It looks like there's some kind of a pop-up sprinkler sticking out over there. Uh, which brings me on to the water. So this over here is the borehole. And the agent tells me the borehole is 70 meters deep, never runs out of water, and there's lots and lots of water, lots of water pressure. There's a little gate, which basically blocks the driveway off from the rest of the vegetable garden. And these are the front gates of the property. And as we look down in this direction, this is where all of the water gets distributed around the farm to all the houses and different fields and things like that. So that's all on that side there. So I'm just going to go and stand in the driveway again, look back at the house. So you can see exactly what all of this part is about. So all fully fenced off, as is everything else. Um, but this is like the main habitation part. So now we're walking out of the, the property through the cast iron gates in the front. And just to orientate ourselves, this is where we've parked. There's Gina in the background. 
<laughs> and uh, I want to take you onto the other fields now because in front of us there are some fields that come along with the house and also on this side. So let's first start with this one over here. This is the the one that's next to the house. Now this runs as far as you can see to where those trees are down there. That's pretty much as far as it runs. Now um, you can see that it's been ploughed and the reason why they do that is to basically stop fire because if this was all just left as grass it would probably be about waist or shoulder height and it would be a real problem. So right now the easiest thing for them to do is just to plough it and it's a lot safer. But obviously you could plant it up with crops and do whatever you want with that space. Now this basically goes quite far down in this direction and we're going to walk there in a sec. But before we do that I want to show you this field. It's exactly the same, also being ploughed. Um, goes quite far back in that direction. Now I know we're going to get much better shots of this with the drone. And in here we've got a whole bunch of uh, trees like uh, chestnuts and things like that. So nut, nut trees mainly. And I'm going to take you on the road and show you how far back these go. So this goes all the way back to when we first started the video and I was showing you where the tractor buildings and stuff like that were. It goes all the way back there. And uh, now let's just get onto this road and have a walk. You're going to come for a walk with us, Gina? Yeah. And let's have a walk down this lovely little road. Now this road, in one kilometre from where we are, so a thousand metres, you will hit the Sabugal Dam. And uh, yeah, I don't actually know what it looks like down there because I haven't been down there. But uh, I assume you'll just be able to go swimming and all sorts of stuff. Look how pretty this is. We've got oak trees on both sides of the road. Now this is a public road, so potentially you could have other people using it. Uh, I do see some uh, bicycle tracks and I could imagine this is a lovely place to go cycling. But yeah, on this side and on this side all belongs to the property still. It's got uh, sheep fencing with two rows or one row of barbed wire along the top. Concrete posts so they won't need replacing for a long time. And yeah, as you can see it runs a very long distance down to the bottom. I think we've got about another, I would say, 30 meters on this side until it ends. This one over here ends on this corner. So this field on the right, you own it all the way up until this post. And then all the way back to where that uh, tractor building was. And now we can see the house over here and this big field. Oh, there's a sign for cycle routes. Yes. Yeah, I saw that earlier. So this is a, an actual cycle. It's like a cycle path that, that takes you down to the dam. I can actually start to see the water on this side here. But it's about a thousand meters away, so about a kilometer away. And now we get to the limit, as they say here, the border of the property. And that's where these two concrete posts meet. So this is the border going straight up there back in that direction and then this is all of your land across here. Pretty awesome. Now we're just going down the little dirt track towards the Sapigal Dam. It's uh, 1,000 meters away so we're just going to go and have a look. Yeah so Gina walked down here while we were filming. She walked down here and had like a little dip in the water and she said that the road's going to be perfectly fine for the car. It is fine but it's just got very sort of I don't know very rough stones in it. But, you know, it's not, it's not bad. I mean, this is like a Golf GT, it's a very low car. And you, as long as you drive slowly, it's okay. But this is, there's only one farm between you and um, the dam. Is this the farm that you said was for sale? No, this is an agricultural farm. Okay, so. this is a house, but it looks. Okay, so is this for sale? No, oh. one further down, it's a ruin. Ah, okay, so you got this farm here, um, but it's quite far away. I mean, this is like half a kilometer away. And then they've got like their main farmhouse and stuff on this side. Um, and these are your only neighbors. And they're far away. And this is where we go down to the water. So yeah, a thousand meters, it's not too far. You can run it if you're into like trail running or you can cycle down here, or you can even drive down here. And it's just a nice walk as well. Just a nice walk, yeah. Or you can walk down here, yeah. And you've got this big expansive dam. So this is a river called the Cow, Cow River, Cow River. I'm probably like pronouncing it wrong, but it's a river that they've dammed off and they've built this big hydroelectric dam. 
which they generate power from, but they also apparently use it as a drinking water source. So it should be nice clean water. So you can see there's almost like lines of where the water, where, where the high water mark is and the lower, and you know, as it goes lower. But we are sort of in the middle of summer now, so, you know, the waters are going to be a bit low. But very beautiful, look at this. I'm not sure, generally when they have drinking water, they don't allow you to put like petrol craft on here or anything. But you'll probably find that the fire plans land here to put out fires and stuff. And you could probably do something like a sup board, um, you know, sup boards, kayaks, uh, go for a swim. So a very cool thing to have only a kilometer away. All in all, I'm very impressed by this property. You know, three hectares of land with a big house like that. It's basically two houses, a swimming pool, all of the agricultural uh, you know, equipment, storage spaces, the forest, um, all of the different fields, nut trees, fruit trees, animal buildings. I think you're getting a lot for your money for 230,000 euros. Um, in terms of like needing renovations and stuff, uh, you know, the house is very clean, very neat, tidy, very livable. Um, there, there's certain areas of the house which um, might need redoing like certain bathrooms where some of the, I don't know, like toilets and showers were a little bit old. Um, but n n nothing that much needed unless you really wanted to modernize it. Uh, and then also, you know, the house is split in half, um, but the one half, as you saw, um, the bedroom windows and things opened up into that big agricultural barn. So that area of the house, um, you know, if you did split it in half and you wanted to have like an, like an Airbnb or a B&B or something, um, you would probably have to live in the darker area as opposed to the nicer area, which has got all the light. Uh, but all in all, I really enjoyed looking at this property. I think you're getting great value for money. I don't think it'll be on the market for very long. And uh, it's got this amazing dam. And I'm gonna go for a swim now. Anyway, thank you very much for, uh, well, for contracting us to make this video for you. I've really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, shoot any questions you have via email. Let me know if you have any questions about this property. And uh, if you want us to shoot another video for you, let me know. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Ciao.